So if you were to move to Atlanta, when would you? When do you think you would do it? Not for not for a couple of years. Yeah. But I just started walk, watching Walking Dead. That's all in Atlanta, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's all filmed there. It's like Atlanta is like the new Hollywood of the South. Because it's really cheap to film there, isn't it's it? It's super cheap. They did yeah. all those tax cuts, so we have so celebrities there constantly filming stuff. And there's not a lot of paparazzi, so they actually have like some peace and quiet. Amazing. Which would be your? I see that smile. You're like, well, no pap for yeah. <laughs> That's, that'd be wonderful. <laughs> I hope you don't mind. I'm actually gonna ask for a little bit of help. Yeah. Um, I'm totally taking advantage of my position here in my access. So I'm getting married in April. Awesome. And uh, John Legend picked out my picture for my Save the Dates. So I wanted to know if you would pick out my wedding cake. Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I, I have three options for you. You can tell our colors. Defin definitely the middle one. You like the middle it's one? Pretty, yeah. It's you really like it, so you like simple? I like simple but symmetrical as well. That's not symmetrical and that's, uh, that just looks a bit too shiny and weird. And you can, put, you can put a little you and him on the top of that. Oh, our little cake topper. Yeah. Now, I know I'm Is not it chocolate though? Yes, of course. Yeah. I'm a chocolate girl. Well, we'll have different flavors because I'm not going to try to make everybody eat chocolate. Have so. you seen that? There, there, there was a meme that came out of a. Uh, it was a wedding cake, and someone that someone had taken a slice of it before. Before the, the, yeah. the bride and groom cut it. <laughs> you got to be pissed. Yeah. Who would do that? I don't know. Now I'm not trying to put any pressure on you, but it, you know, when the time comes, would you be a very hands-on groom? Like, would you be planning a lot of the stuff, or would no, you? Just I don't think the groom is ever allowed to plan anything other, other than. No, not in the stag do, because like the the bride the, the bride wants the wedding that she wants, and the groom just has to kind of like stand by and nod. Well, there are some groomzillas; they exist. I know, but They're... then but then you're going to be a bad husband if you just take control. Like the, it's it's the girl's day. The girl the, the girl has to just run run with it. Uh, do you know what? Do, do, do you know what I would say though? What I would love to have a say in is you know you have the wedding and then everyone stands around for a while drinking champagne and there's no food and everyone gets really really drunk by about two o'clock. Mm -hmm. What what I'd have is have the wedding mid-afternoon and then just have food trucks. So like have fish and chips, pizza, um, jerk chicken, like, and so as soon as the wedding's over, people grab a beer and grab like finger food. And then, the, and there's no fancy meal. You just eat on a lawn somewhere. And cause no one wants the fancy meal. Everyone wants like dirty, like fries in a bag. And So you're gonna let, you know what we're having for our reception for the dinner? What? Fried chicken. Oh. <laughs> I'm from Kentucky, so Amazing. we're doing it back in Kentucky, and I'm like, you know, the fancy frou frou stuff. And I'm like, I you're not gonna get KFC to cater the wedding, though. Are you? Well, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> now, don't get me wrong. I love me some KFC, but yeah. that kind of upsets the tone. I found after something a while. out yesterday that apparently they can't call it chicken. They have to call it KFC because it's not technically chicken. I'm, I don't know. I, I hail from I the state of Kentucky, that, and I'm so true? devastated. It's, a, it's I, an urban legend. Urban legend. Yeah. Okay, I was like. Cause you know, the, I, we had an interview a couple years back. I, do you remember the interview we did with Ed and Bed when we were at the yeah, 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 yeah. So um, I didn't ever want to assume, and you were the one that taught me not to drink water out of hotel rooms, and I have never drank it from a hotel yeah, yeah, faucet yeah. since then. You can then. get, you can get really ill doing that. Yeah. So you teach, you teach me all kinds of things, Ed. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> now during your one year break from social media, um, which I was really impressed that you stuck to it literally to to the one year, came back. I on, didn't even post that thing. The, the, you know the thing. Oh, the posted, thing on December thirteenth. Yeah, 13th, you yeah didn't I didn't. It? I didn't because I didn't have anything to post it from. So I gave. Uh, I gave a guy at the label my login, and he posted everything up until my thank you note, and then I've been posting things since, since then. I got you because it was like one year to the day, and it was Taylor Swift's birthday, so I didn't know if that was just coincidence. That was just coincidence. Yeah, that was just coincidence. But so, yeah, I was in New Zealand when I posted that. I think she was in Australia actually yeah. when I posted that. Yeah, we, we were touring at the same time. Now, when when your friends were talking about stuff during your hiatus, I mean, did you have no idea what the hell they were talking about? No, I still I still read the paper. You know, I got I, I got uh, tried to stay up to date. I did miss the mannequin challenge though. I did that com completely passed me by. All right, so you had no idea. Chewbacca mom? Do you know anything about Chewbacca? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. that was funny. I liked her. Yeah. Now, it's it's amazing how someone laughing can just make people happy, isn't it? Like those videos are like babies laughing, yes. just like make everyone happy. It's the simple things, yeah. which I so so appreciate. Now, um, as you were putting together your new album Divide this past year, we lost some significant music icons yeah. throughout the entire year, um, and just to name a few, like David Bowie, Leonard Cohen, uh, Five Dog Prince, George Michael here recently. Does that affect your process when you're putting an album together? Like, will you be so moved? Because I know how much you love music that you'll write a special song or change something. Like no, I don't, it, it hasn't it hasn't changed anything from, of my output, but it it just it does make me sad that news because none of those. No, but what well, Leonard Cohen was quite young as well, but like it's uh, like all 
all of the people you just mentioned were they really got gone too soon. Like there was no like, like if if I was like ninety and I'd passed away, I wouldn't want people to be upset because you have to die at some point, and ninety is like a good a good innings. But like I, yeah, I think um I think any, any anything before eighty is a bit a bit sad. Especially because of like you know Prince and David Bowie being the music icons that they were and affecting. Mm and having so much such a heavy impact on everybody. But even someone like George Michael, like it's yeah. it's mad how many songs you know of George, George Michael's when we when we found out we just blasted oh. all the songs all day and it's it, you you know every single one of them. It's a shame that you actually don't appreciate them more when they're alive yeah. and then they pass and it's like, "Oh my god, you forget how like amazing and how much awesome music there was." I guess that's the one positive thing to come to come from it is uh, it spreads happiness. Yeah. In, in people, they they get the music out again, and they feel really sort of warmed by by the music. But yeah, there's not a lot of positive in that. I know your music career is very impressive, um, but growing up in Suffolk, did you ever imagine yourself hanging out with royalty and hanging out with the royals? Because that no. that's impressive. Yeah. That's impressive for me because I'm like obsessed with the royal. Family. Well, yeah, I, I I went to a state school as well, so like it, I, if I'd have gone to like a private school, it would be less weird because that's the kind of circle that people mix in. But to like go to like a regular state school and then end up being there um it was quite quite a surreal thing i remember me and me and my girlfriend were sat at the table and someone said your highness to to them and i was like oh what oh well no actually yeah we are actually we are actually with, with royalty at the moment this is very surreal <laughs> do you have to use that same terminology by the way is there a protocol you have to follow or no what well, so so the first time the first time i met them i was playing uh holly branson's wedding uh but it's like six six years ago, and uh, I, I'm not I'm not very good with like faces and names and like keeping up to date with 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 stuff. So I didn't know what they looked like, and I found myself in a in a long conversation with uh, with someone at at this wedding, and they were very sober, and I was very 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 drunk and a bit sort of like. <laughs> and then the next morning they were like, you know, that was one of the princesses, and I was like, oh. So like so like I've I, I've never really had that sort of um relationship with them where I have been proper. <laughs> I think I think they expect me to be the uh, the loose one. Oh that, that's probably what they appreciate too. And by the way the scar's pretty badass. Thank you. Yeah, you get I, I like mean it's got it's a hell of a story too. Yeah, well I mean the 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 paper got that that story kind of messed up. I don't know how it got So it was it yeah. re like super embellished? No, it was just me and James Blunt were playing with swords when we were drunk. Yeah. Yeah. And that kind of stuff happens. As you do, as we, we, all, <laughs> all all men should do, just I mean, get swords and play with them. Yeah, I know. I mean, I know. Whenever I'm hammered with my girlfriends, I mean, the first thing we want to do is just you know get out a butcher's knife and slice each other. Yeah, and just start going at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, I loved watching this go viral. You doing um, your version of the Fresh Prince of Bel Air thing. I only found out that went viral yesterday. I just it had like a million hits in a day. It, it would. Yeah, it's so awesome because I mean, you know, I think we're about the, uh, close to the same age. So I was a huge fan of the show too. Watched it growing up. So I wanted to know if we could do, re, like, have Ed's version of another famous TV theme song. And I, I don't know if you've heard, it's a big deal. The Golden Girls are coming to Hulu. Yeah, I've never seen Golden Girls. Oh, you don't know Golden Sorry. Girls. Oh, wait a second. Let me just go ahead. Do I have to sing a song that I've never heard? <laughs> that you have to do what? Do I have to sing a song that I've never heard? No, 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 no. Thank you for being a friend. Oh, it's about Oldham. Yeah. <laughs> I really wouldn't like this show. <laughs> I really wouldn't like it. Final. I can literally feel my vagina growing. <laughs> <laughs> I just introduced you to the Golden Girls. Yeah. That's the Golden I'll try, Girls. I'll try, do you know what, maybe if uh, so no go. one told you life was gonna be this way. Your job's a joke, you broke, your love life's D.O.A. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> Feels like you're always stuck in... Second. 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 Ah, when it hasn't been your day, your week, your month, or even your year, I'll be there for you. When the rain starts to fall, I'll be there for you. Like I've been there before, I'll be there for you. Like you're there for me too. Yeah. Yes! That's another, that's another one. That's
but you were you were really into Friends. Yeah, of yeah. Course. Friends Who wasn't. Friends is, what is this dude doing? Oh, I, I th what did you get? <laughs> what does he say? Wait. Oh, he was doing. Wait, let's do the replay real quick. So. He's singing Golden Girls. Yeah, he is. Thank you for being a friend. Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs> Don't you just love the internet? <laughs> Oh, he was wearing a weave. <laughs> he was. I like him. Yeah, that's finally Aaron, by the way. He's got 1.1 1. 1. 1 million hits, not bad. You and um, your girlfriend are living together. What would she say is your most annoying habit? Like mine, I never replace the toilet paper roll when it's empty. I get yelled at all the time for that. Uh, I'm not sure. I think the most annoying habit in women though is putting those pillows on a bed you know when they put like 15 pillows on the bed and they just get taken off when you go to bed never used and then you sleep and then you wake up and then they put the pillows back on the bed what is that about i don't know how it happens so every time i go to home goods i see another one another pillow and you I just have to you're have. you're one of these girls then i'm a pillow girl and i don't even know why because i toss them all off they're so uncomfy as well they're like like they're th little tiny p pillows and they're hard and they're not soft and they have weird things. And they don't on. even make the bed look nicer. You just you look at the bed and you're like, oh, I, I, can't, I don't know if I can ruin that. You know, I don't know if I can just jump on that. I will try to be better about not buying. No, it's clothes. just I don't think enough men speak up about it because we just kind of nod, nod and accept it. But it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the dumb thing. So you need to go to Facebook and create a, a fan page of No More Pillows and just start a movement. Yeah. Start a No Pillow movement. No, do you know what? Put them on the spare bed. You can have you you you, you can have your pillow bed. You put you put them in the spare room on the spare bed. But, okay. But just just leave 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 the bed. Leave the bed. Come on. <laughs> All right, if you could be in any boy band, because you're a phenomenal solo singer, but if you could be in any boy band, your choice, which boy band would you like to be in? Uh, Backstreet Boys, because I, I, rec I, reckon, I reckon I could pull off a white suit. Yeah? And a cane. I have a cane as well. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe like in the future music video for um, any of your singles coming off Divide, you what, can get in a white, get in a yeah, white, white, white suit. Why, why not? Oof, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe I wouldn't be able to pull it off. Actually, make it worse. <laughs> and I read that you have a, a man cave where you painted um, the walls black, and people come in and autograph. I've got two actually. I've got one in London and, and one in Suffolk. Yeah. Dude, nice. Um, what would you say is the most impressive chalk autograph you have on your man cave wall? Eric Clapton. That's huge. Um, I mean, also, uh, what, what's impressive for me uh, to other musicians is uh, Rick Rubin because he never comes to England and he was there for like the first time in a long time and he hit me and he was like, I'm in West London, where are you? And I was like, I live in West London. He's like, cool, I'll come around. And so he just popped around my house, uh, which, was, which was really random. But, uh, but yeah, I'd say Eric, Eric Clapton for me is the most impressive one that's on the wall. I see, and I, I'm a huge classic rock fan. My dad raised me right. I grew up listening to like his old Beatles vinyl and CCR and the Rolling Stones. So when you meet somebody like Eric Clapton for the first time, I mean, are you kind of like, are you are you nervous? Uh, well, I've um, I've I've been fortunate enough to you know spend spend a bit of time with him over the last sort of two or three years. So uh, it, it's um, yeah, obviously still nerve wracking. But the, what, when was the first time I met him? Uh, I think I, w I think I went in the studio with him the first time first time I met him yeah yeah that was the first time and you, you just you were just no, no, no I was very nervous but he's he's you know he's a really friendly guy you yeah. don't you, you don't come in and feel really intimidated like he's that's always lovely to hear yeah he's friendly that's what you want to hear now as you were putting um, your new album divide together was there any songs you came across that gave you fits and do you ever give up on anything or do you do you see it all the way through no I mean like shape shape of you probably had like a hundred plus mixes on it so like after like mix three or four, I was like, to the label, you, you just you just do your thing on it. Because like, you know when it's just too many cooks and ev everyone has an opinion, so I just let them all have their opinions and then at the end I kind of swept in and changed everything. How many people are you willing to let listen to some of your songs before they go public? Oh, whoever. Yeah. Whoever, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not that fussy. Um, yeah, whoever's like, whoever wants to hear them really, as long as they don't record them on their phone. <laughs> 
keep them, just yeah, as long as they yeah. don't release them to the world before you're ready. And I, I, I'm not going to ask you to pick a, a favorite song that you've written or a favorite song um, that you perform because I don't think that's fair. But I would love to know if there is one particular lyric that when you wrote it down, you were like, damn, that's good. Like, do you have a favorite just lyric that mm. has resonated with you the most? Uh, I don't know. I th prob probably, uh... Because I know you've written a lot. <laughs> yeah, probably, I, I mean, probably some s something that's in, like, in, like, the A-team. Mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, I don't know. Or, like, on, on the new album, the first track is called, um... A razor, and the first two lines are: "I was born inside a small town, and I, lo I lost that state of mind. I learned to sing inside the Lord's house and stopped the age of nine. Um, I quite like that. Was like a kind of a, the whole of that song was a, a kind of verbal vomit, and those two lines sort of opened opened up the door. Yeah, it was good. All right, divide is out March third. Ed Sheeran, it's so lovely to see you. You're nice always to, so I, well, I want to come back so on the Burt Show when yes. I'm back in uh, Atlanta. Yeah, yeah. The, the door is always open. Awesome. Come, come anytime. Awesome. And I promise I will notice if they slap on more makeup on you. Okay. Oh, you totally remember yeah, that. Yeah, I do. <laughs> I did my own makeup today, by the way. Not yeah, no, no, I know, I know, but I felt, I felt bad because they were, look, they were all looking at me like, uh, do you notice anything different? And I was like, yeah. That's it, yeah. The boys yeah. love to make it like embarrass us, which is actually, was, I was glad I was glad to be here solo with you today. Yeah, of course. Well, thank you, thank you. I'll be back in uh, the A. Awesome. Soon.